today we're going to learn about color basics. We're going to talk about how the wheel works, why it works the certain way it does, and how by knowing how to use the wheel you can start to divide it out to your benefit. As we go through the exercises, use the color cards that you've cut out to make your own color wheels and lines as described. By physically doing this along with the video, your brain will make connections between colors visibly and tangibly. Remember, if at any time the video is going too fast for you, go ahead and pause it until you can catch up. You can also rewind and go back and watch at any time. It's important that you feel comfortable with that exercise before moving on to the next one. What about the grays? Set them aside for now. We're going to start with colors and move on to neutrals. You've received a rainbow color selector wheel. This is a special kind of wheel designed especially for quilters. I'm not the one who thought of this, but we're going to use this as a tool in this lesson. Later on, we'll get into more details about how this wheel works and how to use it. This is a basic color wheel. I'm sure you've seen this from any elementary school art class. Viewing colors in a wheel fashion allows you to see the relationship between colors. Understanding these relationships helps us to know why certain colors go together and why some don't. In the book, I dive into all the science-y, physics reasons about how and why your eye does what it does. You can go ahead and read that. There's also some great YouTube videos. Because there are already some really great science videos on how the eye functions, I'm not going to cover that here in the video, but you could definitely look on that on your own. Let's dive into what makes this wheel tick. The color wheel is designed to show relationships between colors. At first, it's divided into warm and cool. Colors literally have a temperature. Your eye sees them as hot or cold, as described in the wavelength chart in your book. There's a lot more physics behind this, but we're going to stick to just how it applies to arts. Look around. Your world is already full of warm and cool tones. To start, make a color wheel with all of your cards. Mine were still in stacks, but you can pull out just the top card of every color. Sort them out in a color wheel. A cool color means that it's closer to the primary color blue. A warm color is going to involve primary colors red and yellow and have those as undertone. Here's an example of an all cool color scheme quilt in the sunburst quilt pattern by Yvonne Fuchs of Quilting Jet Girl. The use of the three tones of blue, light, medium, dark, and the cool white adds and enhances this cool color scheme. You can also see the use of the opposite in warm colors with reds, oranges, and yellows. In upcoming videos, you'll learn more details about undertones and all the color groups. If you need to, refer to the glossary at the back of the book for definitions. Divide your wheel into cool and warm colors. You'll notice that the red violet and the yellow green can be either warm or cool colored. This quilt by Kate Colleran of Seems Like a Dream is a perfect example of how yellow green and red violet can swing either direction. The red, violet, and the yellow, green really depend on what combinations of the other colors they are with. In this quilt by Joanna Figueroa, you can see that there is warm and cool tones here. The use of the limey green and the cool blue green help to further enhance the message of that sherbety tone. Practice using the number eight true hue color cards and dividing them into warm and cool color groups. Next up, color groups. 